Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk. My name is Stephen Mead. I'm the managing broker here at Domicile Real Estate in Southern California. And today we're going to rant a little bit, and I'm going to admit to you that I lied just a teeny bit. Um, I am going to tell you exactly what to do when your house doesn't appraise, but I want to talk a little bit about fair housing and appraisal bias before I do that. If I put those in the title, nobody would click on this, but it's really important. So in the news, there's been a lot of talk about fair, fair housing and bias in appraisals. This is situations where people of a particular color, um, you know, a particular ethnicity, race, gender, um, feel that they've received a biased appraisal that was not in their favor. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are which are the biggest buyers of mortgages in the United States, they've conducted analysis and they've concluded that yes, there is definitely some bias present and some very smart people are working on that, working on that problem. We're actually attending uh, later on in April, I will be at the California Association of Real Realtors Fair Housing Day uh, this year. It's being held in uh, Hollywood, California. So I'm gonna go up there, lots of speakers, including one on appraisal bias. Um, but that leaves something on the table, and that is, what do you do if an appraisal doesn't come in? What can you do as a person today to help protect yourself against appraisal bias and against an appraisal that comes in low and potentially can thwart a transaction for you? So the first thing you can do is be alert. And what I mean by that is this is kind of like step zero, and it's not being in a position of having a biased appraisal in the first place. And one of the big things that we notice that happens for appraisals that come in low is a lot of times lenders, because appraisers can be busy, will assign an out of area appraiser. That is an, an appraiser who does not have competence and knowledge in your area. I once had an appraisal of an architectural home in Orange, California. The appraiser was driving from Temecula, which was pretty much an hour away from the property. And a lot of people don't understand this, but if this happens, you can actually protest with the lender before that appraiser even comes out saying that this is not a suitable appraiser for the property, that this needs to be someone who has local expertise, especially in this case, this was an architectural home. So we needed someone who had that specialized expertise. The other thing that you can do is be prepared. And this is something that your agent and your lender can do. And this is true whether you're buying a home or whether you're refinancing a house. And if you're refinancing a home, you know, usually it's going to be the homeowner. It's going to be you that meets the appraisal appraiser. But that doesn't mean you have to be unprepared. On nearly every single appraisal that we do, we actually prepare a package of comps and extra information about the property and usually some of the key points we think that are driving the value of that property, especially compared to other homes in the area. This is important for a couple reasons. Number one, this is important because it tells the appraiser that you are the homeowner and or buyer who is paying attention and that you are going to be the person who will be a squeaky wheel if they do not do a good job. So number one, it kind of puts the appraisers on alert that you're a party that is engaged. Number two, appraisers are not mind readers. They don't know everything and frequently they are underpaid for the job they're doing, in my opinion. Giving them this extra information gives them more data to do a better appraisal. They don't know about every upgrade that was made to the property. They don't know that it has a solar roof that was installed last year and that it might have power walls in the garage that they seem to have missed. Right? You need to let them know this information about those upgrades and about the property so that they can write a better appraisal report. Okay, so you've met the appraiser, you've made sure they're competent, they know the area, and still the appraisal comes back undervalued. And what do I mean by undervalued? This means that either in the effect of a refinance, you were hoping to get, say, a million dollar appraisal and it ended up coming in at 950, or if you were buying the home for a million dollars, and it came in at 950. And the reason why this is a problem, if you are new to this, is that lenders will give you a loan based on the lower of purchase price 
or appraised value. So this means if you were planning on putting putting 20% down and your appraisal comes in at 950, but you're buying the house for a million, they will only give you a loan for about, let's see, I think it'd be a little over $750,000. That means you as the buyer have to make up that difference to have a 20% down loan. This is not a great situation. So what happens when you get this appraisal report back and you think that it was an unfair appraisal and that it did wasn't performed accurately or was performed with bias or mistakes made? Well, the first thing is, you'll notice I said, when you get this report back, by law, as a borrower on a loan, you are entitled to a copy of the appraisal at least three days before closing. Good lenders will give you a copy of that appraisal as soon as it has come in. So do not forget to ask for that. If you don't get a copy of the appraisal, if the lender just says the appraisal came in low, raise your hand and say, I want to see the appraisal report. You are legally entitled to a copy of that report. And it's really within that report that you're going to find the ammo. Many people do not know this, but you can challenge appraisals. You can go through this report. You can look for mistakes and you can point out errors. So this is something we do for our clients, fortunately, because we prepare very well. It does not happen very often, but it does some, sometimes still happen. And we will file what's called a rebuttal or a challenge to the appraisal. And you know, really three things can happen. Outcome number one, the lender says, we've looked at your challenge and we don't think there's anything to it. The appraisal stands. Number two, they can say there was absolutely some validity to your issues. We are going to take these issues. We're going to go back to the appraiser and we are going to tell them we think they made a mistake in these areas and to please reevaluate the report. Outcome three, the lender can look at these mistakes and can actually say, we think this appraisal is so flawed. We're going to toss it out or we're going to order a second appraisal. In my experience, Generally, when we have pointed out errors that are pretty egregious, lenders will go for option number three. They will credit you for the cost of the first appraisal, um, and they will then order a second appraisal on that property, um, which will then be reviewed according to their same standards. Now, if you're filing a challenge, it's very important that you know the right things to challenge. If you go to an appraisal and you want to argue and they say, well, they only said the, they said the fireplace was only worth an extra $4,000, and I think it added $6,000 of value to the property. That generally will not work. You want to look for things in that appraisal that are not items of opinion, but really items of fact. And the more factual you can make your arguments. Here's a good example. What if on one of the comps, they said it was a three-bedroom, but in fact, it was a four-bedroom property? Or on one of the comps, they said it was a four bedroom when in fact it only had three. These are factual mistakes in the report and you want to point out as many of those mistakes as you can. This is where you really get that ammo to get a lender to determine that this is not a good appraisal and that you deserve to have another shot at this and another appraisal be ordered. And you know, if you have questions about this, definitely reach out to us. This is something that we do fairly commonly whenever it comes up. Fortunately, it doesn't come up a whole lot, but I'd say over our career, we've probably done 20 or 30 of these appraisal rebuttals where we go in and we challenge the appraisal. Sometimes we even have some luck in getting the appraisal tossed before the appraiser even gets there on the basis that they're not competent and familiar with the area and the type of property that they are appraising. Uh, and we can actually get a new appraiser assigned, but in those cases where we can't, even if it goes through and we get an appraisal that really shows some signs of bias, it's an improperly done appraisal, going through and finding those mistakes, those actual technical mistakes in the document, that's really where you get the mileage. Um, and, you know, you owe it to yourself. This is something, you know, we're not going to fix appraisal bias in one day, but this is something that you can do right now to protect yourself in the event that you do get a low or a biased appraisal that comes through. Any other questions and comments, as always, we love them. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you are looking to buy or sell real estate in Southern California, especially Los Angeles and Orange Counties. Absolutely reach out to us. We would love to lend you our expertise. Uh, let's see. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to say it again, and we'll see you again real soon.